So when it comes to travel nurse pay, number one, we're paid more, but also number two, we get tax-free stipends from the government that cover our housing and our meals. And so because such a large portion of our pay is tax-free, that's a game changer when it comes to travel nursing and really maximizing your income. So I always tell every nurse, I know some people, they got to stay local, they have their reasons. But if you have the opportunity to pick up a traditional travel nursing contract, meaning you leave your permanent home and you pick up an assignment in a different city and, you know, your contract is over there, you have new housing, all that, um, it's absolutely worth it. Today's guest, Sarah Gaines, took an unconventional path into entrepreneurship. She transitioned away from a traditional bedside nursing job into a travel nursing job. And this move allowed her to make four to five times more than she ever would have within a traditional nursing job. Because of this, she retired at the age of 29. Listen, she has not had to pick up a nursing contract in three years. Today, she spends her time traveling and building business businesses she is passionate about. This move has not only allowed her to build a life she loves, but has also helped her on her path to building generational wealth. Now, of course, we aren't all from medical backgrounds and can't all be travel nurses. However, I think we can all learn from the moves that Sarah made. Because she felt underappreciated, burnt out, and underpaid in her traditional role, she took an intermediate step that gave her location flexibility, time flexibility, and allowed her to stack her money so that she was able to do whatever she wanted in the long run. So if you're interested in specifically being a travel nurse, the details she shares as usual are gonna be very helpful to you. But if you are just looking for a story of how someone has built something impressive and built their own blueprint for success, keep watching because this is gonna be a great episode for you as well. Before we dive in, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss our next episode. We have new episodes out every single Thursday. All right, with that, let's dive right in. Sarah Gaines, welcome to She's Off Script. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much for having me. So for anyone who hasn't come across you before, could you share who you are and what you do? Of course. My name is Sarah Gaines. I am a retired travel nurse turned full-time entrepreneur and digital nomad, and I help nurses secure and leverage premium travel nurse contracts so that they can put themselves in a position to work less and earn more. Okay. And I think we just had this discussion that I thought was a great way to kick off the topic is, what do you mean by you're retired? You are very young. (laughs) What do you mean by you're retired? (laughs) Yes. Um, So I retired from the bedside at 29 years old, and I was basically able to do that through travel nursing. But my definition of retirement means you Put yourself in the position where you've built enough wealth and you have enough extra streams of income coming in to the point where you don't have to pick up shifts as a nurse. You don't have to work at the bedside. You choose to do so when you want to, but not because you need to. And you said you haven't picked up a contract in three years. So I can't (laughs) wait to learn how those who are in the medical field and do have the skills can get on that train because that sounds phenomenal. But (laughs) so for anyone who hasn't heard of travel nursing, maybe you can define that for us. Sure. Okay. So travel nurses are basically experienced nurses who are hired to fill staffing needs for hospitals. So um, we can be hired for anything. I would say the most common reason that people think we're hired is due to COVID, right? But (laughs) travel nursing existed well before COVID. I actually travel nursed for like several years before COVID hit. Um, Mm -hmm. But that was one of the things that kind of made travel nursing less of a hidden gem and kind of put it on the map, which is kind of cool. Um, But we can be hired for several other things, um, anything that can cause short staffing. So for example, (laughs) I was actually hired one time because half the unit was pregnant. And <laughs> all, of their nurses were going, it's catchy. Yes. <laughs> all of their nurses were going on maternity leave and they just needed some experienced nurses to jump in and cover that staffing need for three months while all their nurses were off. And so, yeah, I came in, worked for a couple months and left. We also can be hired for natural disasters or anything like that. Mm, and how did you get started in the travel nursing world? 
Oh, um, it was really unexpected. I had the first person who actually told me about travel nursing was my dad. And um, he was a world traveler. And at the time, now I'm a world traveler. But at the time, I was not. And so when he told me about it, it just sounded too good to be true. He was like, yeah, you can do this travel nursing thing. And you can make like so much more money. And you get to travel and choose where you want to work. And I was like, dad, you don't know what you're talking about. Like, <laughs> that sounds like a scam. Um, but to make a long story short, I was at my permanent staff job and I had been working there for about three years. And I was to the point where I was feeling really burnt out. I was just really, really overworked. We had mandatory overtime. I was definitely mm-hmm. severely underpaid, unfortunately. Um, but I stayed there, honestly, because I was comfortable and it was what I knew. Um, and my, uh, my dad was diagnosed with cancer mm-hmm. and, um, it ended up being a terminal disease. So mm-hmm. I took care of him until he passed away. And the day after my dad passed away, I basically was called in to come into work. And, you know, I asked the manager, I said, can I please just have a couple of days to grieve? You know, I have my dad's funeral tomorrow. And basically the answer was no due to staffing needs. So the day after my dad's funeral, I came to work. I'm a labor and delivery nurse. So my patient that day, she had a beautiful delivery, but she was my age. She was in her twenties. She was black. So I just instantly connected to her. And the moment that she delivered and called her dad in to see his first grandchild, I just I lost it. Like I was on the ground in the fetal position, just crying. Um, And, you know, my coworkers were surrounding me, telling me everything was going to be okay, comforting me. And then my manager actually came in and told me to get up because I was making a scene and I have another patient coming. Oh my gosh. Just where's the humanity in that? Yeah. And so it was at that moment (laughs) that I knew I was done with that place. But Mm -hmm. unfortunately, I was not in the financial position to just quit, leave and say, Oh, I don't want this job, you know, Um, especially after I had just lost my father, and I was helping Mm -hmm. out, you know, my mother. And so I had to do exactly what she said. Unfortunately, I had to get up, wipe my tears and, you know, continue with the rest of my day. But um, during my lunch break, I was vigorously (laughs) applying to different jobs and positions Mm -hmm. that were open. And um, a recruiter did actually call me and they said, hey, we have this great job. Um, You know, the shift is great. It's twice as much as you're making and it's the location you want to be in. And I was like, "Mm, sounds like a scam. So I hung up on the recruiter because it just sounded too good to be true. But um, right after I got off the phone with the recruiter, I checked my emails and there was actually an email from my dad that I hadn't opened up yet. And he had actually forwarded me that same job that the recruiter had just told me about. He had wow. forwarded it to me like weeks before. And I was just like, oh my gosh, that's a sign. So I called the recruiter back and I was like, I'm ready. Submit me. I don't care what I have to do. And to make a long story short, the, the recruiter submitted me. The hiring manager ended up calling me on the same shift. I ran in the supply room, did my interview, <laughs> asked for the job. She sent over um, the contract. I signed my contract. And by the end of the shift, um, I gave my two weeks to the same manager that told me I was making a scene. Wow. <laughs> I love that story. There's nothing better than a good, you know, take your job, you know? <laughs> yes. But, like I always tell people I didn't jump into travel nursing. My dad definitely pushed me into it. So I'm grateful oh, for that. That's a beautiful Genesis story. So when you compare traditional bedside nursing to travel nursing, what would you say are the advantages of travel nursing over what people traditionally do? Oh my gosh, there's so many advantages. Like, where do I even start? (laughs) But I'm so glad that you asked this question because many, many nurses are very hesitant to jump into travel nursing because they see it as like risky or scary or jumping into the unknown. So Mm -hmm. I'm really excited to provide clarity on that. Um, I would say the most, the biggest advantage that everyone knows about is the pay. Um, since we are hired on such a short notice and hospitals have a very high demand for us, um, we're paid anywhere from 
double, triple, quadruple more than, you know, the typical staff nurse. So Mm -hmm. my first contract was double what I was making as a staff nurse for the same amount of hours and actually less work, which is why I thought it was a scam. (laughs) (laughs) Too good to be true. Wow. (laughs) So um, pay is a huge benefit, but I honestly tell people all the time, if you don't want pay to be the only factor that you, the only reason why you jump into travel nursing, because if you're already a nurse, you know how quickly burnout can settle in. And Mm -hmm. if you're already feeling burnt out and you're just chasing the money, you're going to end up getting 10 times more burnt out. So other huge, huge benefits that don't have anything to do with money is just the flexibility that it gives you in your career. Um, On any given day, there's an average of, it fluctuates anywhere from 60,000 to over 100,000 travel nurse jobs available to choose from all across the nation. Um, So having the opportunity to just choose when you want to work, wherever you want to work is really, really amazing. And I was in such fight or flight mode when I initially jumped into travel nursing. My initial goal was I need to make more money to help my family and I need to get the hell out of this toxic work environment. Mm -hmm. So I just left as quick as I could. And I jumped into travel nursing really quickly without thinking. But if I were to go back and start all over, I would definitely do what I teach nurses to do now. Think about not where I'm working and how I can leverage that to my advantage. So another advantage when it comes to travel nursing is not only choosing when and where you want to work, But when it comes to where you want to work, you can choose different facilities so that you can gain new skills to add to your resume, which will help you advance your career. You can use that opportunity to cross train on different units, which will help increase your marketability. Therefore, it will increase your pay. You can use it as a networking opportunity. Every single facility that you work at is a new group of colleagues that you can network with, whether you plan to go to school to be a CRNA or Mm -hmm. whether you plan to be a nurse manager or whatever it may be, you can use those opportunities to network. And last but not least, it just really gives you the freedom and flexibility to build wealth because you are making more money but you're working less hours. So Mm -hmm. I started to leverage travel nursing to just take the time off I really needed to stop the burnout. Because at my staff job, I was really, really burnt out. And I was a newer nurse with only three years of experience. Um, And a lot of nurses are shocked when I tell them like, yeah, I was a nurse for 10 years and I wasn't burnt out. Honestly, the cure was travel nursing. Being able to take a contract for three months and then say, Hey, I'm going to take a month off or two Mm. off before I go into my next contract really helped with that work-life balance. Mm. Is there a specific, you know, specialty of nursing that lends itself more to travel nursing? So when it comes to pay, it really is going to fluctuate depending on location, specialty, and demand. I talk about pay because a lot of people really want to know, like, do you really get paid that much? And how, if I am a nurse, how do I increase my marketability? So I'll talk about it from like that perspective. Um, So when it comes to uh, um, a certain specialty, there are some specialties that are in higher demand than others. I would say the top specialties would be ICU, labor and delivery, and operating room. But I'm kind of hesitant to say that because again, the demand is going to fluctuate and it can really fluctuate depending on the season. So Mm -hmm. for example, if you are an ICU nurse, the demand for your skill set and the pay for your skill set is going to drastically increase during cold and flu season. Um, so like during, you know, December, January, Mm -hmm. there's going to be a huge demand for ICU nurses. There's going to be more job opportunities versus labor and delivery. Me on the other spectrum, people are making babies, Christmas, Valentine's day, like Mm -hmm. (laughs) the census. (laughs) So during those times, the census tends to be lower for labor and delivery nurses. There's not as many job opportunities and the pay isn't high because of the demand. So I say all that to say it really 
depends on your specialty in the season. But if you understand how to leverage travel nursing to your advantage, it does not matter what specialty mm. you are. So for example, if you are in ICU nurse, there's yeah. so many different ICUs, right? There's medical ICU, there's neuro ICU, there's cardiovascular ICU. So if you wanted to increase your pay, increase your job opportunities and increase your marketability, all you have to do is cross train and float as much as you can. The more skills you have, the more marketable you'll be and the easier it'll be for you to secure premium contracts, regardless of your specialty or the demand. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, no matter what nurse you are, I would say the biggest skill set to have is inpatient skill set. There are outpatient jobs like clinics, but the biggest demand is in the hospital. So if you Got are it. a nurse and you're considering travel nursing, get inpatient experience. That's most important. And then regardless of what your specialty is, just cross train in as many areas within your specialty so that you're more market marketable and can secure premium contracts with ease. Hmm. So do I need to get some sort of a certification for every single state I work in or is it seamless, you know, to go between states? It is going to depend. So when it comes to certification specifically, mm -hmm. um, that won't be state by state. That'll be specialty by specialty and different specialties will require different certifications. Mm -hmm. um, and then when it comes to working in multiple states, there is a thing called compact states versus non-compact states. I won't get too in the weeds, but basically I think there's over 40 states that are in the compact um, license, meaning if you have a license for that state, it works in all the other ones. So for example, I got my original license from Texas, which is a compact state. Mm -hmm. And Georgia is another compact state. So I can go and work in Georgia with no problems at all. I don't have to do anything. But California is not a compact state. So for my California license, I had to, you don't have to take the NCLEX all over again, mm -hmm. <laughs> but you basically do a background check. They look at, they get your fingerprints. They look at a couple of the things you pay a fee. And then um, it takes a couple months though, or several, especially if it's California. Um, and then you can work there. So the short answer is it depends on where your original license is from. And you just quickly Google the difference between compact and non-compact to find out which um, state that lies in that category. All right. So now I'm actually ready to become a travel nurse, even though I'm, I'm not a nurse by trade. <laughs> but <laughs> if I were, if I were trying to get into travel nursing, how would I go about picking the right recruiter, travel agency to land my first assignment or contract? Oh, this is where it's getting juicy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so when it comes to picking the right recruiter and the right company. This is actually one of the most common questions that people ask me. And one thing that I do very, very differently, I actually approach travel nursing completely differently. And I can approach it from the approach that is most beneficial towards you. So mm. I will talk about the common mistake that people make when it comes to finding recruiters and companies, and then I'll talk about what you can do differently. Mm -hmm. So the most common mistake is nurses, they find like another random travel nurse on their assignment or maybe on social media. And they're like, what's the best company? Who's the best recruiter to work with? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the nurse is like, it's X company, it's X recruiter. Here's the thing. There is no such thing as the best company. There is hundreds of um, companies. There is thousands of different travel nurse recruiters. Different companies have different contracts in different areas. And it really depends on what your priorities are. So if you ask a random travel nurse what the best company is or who their recruiter is, they will give you a recommendation. And if they're a stranger, they may have their eye on that referral bonus because you can get like up to $2,000 for each referral. So you have to be careful about like who you're even getting the recommendation from because they may push you towards a certain company because they want $2,000 in their pocket. Right. Um, and then also you want to be careful when you do talk to these recruiters. It's really, really important to have your priorities in check. Because if you 
aren't sure of what you want to do as a travel nurse, where you want to go, what type of facilities you want to work at, what your priorities are, it can be very, you can be very easily persuaded into what that recruiter or company has available. Um, So the way that I suggest doing it is before you talk to any companies or recruiters, you can go on a travel nurse job market and you can scroll through all the different um, jobs that are available. Like I Mm -hmm. mentioned before, there's typically like over a hundred thousand jobs to view on a daily basis. And you can look to see what jobs are available in the areas that you want to work in. So decide your first priority. Where do you want to travel? Um, A common mistake that travel nurses will do is they'll talk to their recruiter and say, oh, well, where should I travel? Or Mm -hmm. where's the best place to travel? And the recruiter is going to sell you the jobs that they have. Like maybe that company mainly staffs in Texas. So your recruiter is going to convince you that the best place to work is Texas Texas and all the jobs are here. Or they'll say things like, oh, there's no jobs in New York. That's not true. Your company doesn't have jobs in New York. Mm. So you're telling the traveler there's no jobs in New York. But if you go with your priorities first and you're like, you know what? I really, really want to work in New York. It prevents you from wasting time and talking to the wrong companies because you'll start by looking at the job boards. You'll put in your priority, which is New York, and you'll Mm. only talk to companies who have positions in New York. Does that That make sense? sense? That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So now you've figured out how to find the recruiter. Does that mean you're working with multiple recruiters, multiple companies at the same time? You're not loyal to anyone specifically. No, I highly suggest to work with multiple companies and multiple recruiters because like I mentioned before, no matter how big the company is, Mm -hmm. there's not one travel nursing company that has all the jobs available. So you really have to work with multiple companies to get a good understanding of the job opportunities that are available to you. Otherwise, if you're just working with one recruiter, which I know many travel nurses do that because it's what's most comfortable. Like, Mm -hmm. I really like this recruiter. They're really nice. But at the end of the day, you're leaving money on the table. Um, So number one, you want to be aware of the job opportunities that are available to you. And then also you want to be able to position yourself to negotiate because when you are working with multiple recruiters, you're going to notice that number one, different recruiters may have different jobs in different areas. One recruiter may say, there's no jobs in New York. Another Mm -hmm. recruiter may say, I have 10. And then you may have your other recruiter saying, yeah, I got 10 jobs in New York too. And you're like, okay, time to compare. And then you'll start noticing the differences in the rates and you'll know which recruiter may be lowballing you. Mm -hmm. So I know sometimes the pay structure for recruiters means that they are taking a piece of the pie that would ordinarily go to you. So is it possible to cut the recruiter out of the process and go directly to the jobs? Theoretically, it is possible to, quote unquote, cut out the middleman. I hear Mm. people talking about that often, but from my experience, it's definitely possible. I'll start off with that. But from my experience of like working with the travel nurse and working with thousands of travel nurses over the last decade, um, it's not as realistic simply because if you um, cut out the recruiter and you are an independent contractor, there's a couple of factors that come into that. One thing I want to state before I get started is if you're a nurse practitioner, that's different. It's very common to be an independent contractor if you're a nurse practitioner. Mm -hmm. It's not as common to be an independent contractor if you are traveling as a registered nurse. We are typically W-2 employees for the company. So some of the obstacles that you may run into if you are trying to travel as an RN, as an independent contractor, is the first thing is most hospitals don't want the liability. Like they would rather Mm. you apply through a travel nursing agency that has the, like the insurance, the coverage, et cetera. And then also like when it comes to travel nursing agencies, many of these agencies have been in the game for 20 years and they're very smart. And they also double as not only like a travel nursing agency, but they are the staffing agency for the hospital. So many of these Mm -hmm. hospitals have exclusive contracts with these agencies. So if you are an independent contractor and you're trying to apply to X facility, 
the travelers and company is going to deny your application and accept the other travelers that are applying through them. So mm. a lot of these companies are, they play two roles. Got um, it. And I have heard of a couple of travel nurses who are like independent contractors. But from what I've noticed is that it's more possible if you're working with a very small facility, but a lot of the larger facilities that have hundreds of um, hospitals across the nation and thousands of positions that they're posting, they've hired a staffing agency, they and the staff and they have an exclusive contract with that vendor. And you have to go through that vendor, there is no quote, unquote, like cutting out the middle man in that circumstance. Well, it was worth a try. So <laughs> <laughs> it's so- worth exploring, like, mm-hmm. I, you know, I'll never say never. Um, but those are just some things to be aware of. So can I be a travel nurse locally and still get all the perks and pay and advantages? Yes and no. <laughs> okay. It would depend on what you consider a perk. For me, um, one of the biggest perks is obviously pay. And a big reason why travel nurses are, okay. So when it comes to travel nurse pay, number one, we're paid more, but also number two, we get tax-free stipends from the government that cover our housing and our meals. And so because such a large portion of our pay is tax-free, mm-hmm. that's a game changer when it comes to travel nursing and really maximizing your income. So I always tell every nurse, I know some people, they got to stay local. They have their reasons. But if you have the opportunity to pick up a traditional travel nursing contract, meaning you leave your permanent home and you pick up an assignment in a different city and, you know, your contract is over there, you have new housing, all that, Mm -hmm. um, it's absolutely worth it. And I say all that to say, if you stay local, you do not qualify for the tax-free stipends. Mm. So it does have a huge effect on your pay. Now, compared to staff nursing, if you're a local travel nurse, you're still going to make more money. But compared to traditional travel nursing, local travel nursing doesn't even touch it. (laughs) Okay, okay. So I have to imagine that it's cumbersome to file taxes when you're working in all these different states. Could you maybe talk a little bit about what that looks like for you? It's not cumbersome for me because I hire a CPA. (laughs) There you go. (laughs) (laughs) People ask me all the time, like, can you give me tax advice? I'm like, just hire a CPA. Mm -hmm. Um, But I will say when it comes to working with a CPA, it is really important to make sure that your CPA has experience working with travel nurses, not just contractors in general, but travel nursing. Because when you have a CPA that understands travel nursing and all the nuances that come with it, Mm -hmm. there's so many different ways that you can really save thousands of dollars when it comes to filing taxes. Mm -hmm. Um, The first year I did my taxes, I did it on TurboTax because I didn't know. Um, And I literally missed out on like $20,000. So that's the, yeah, that's the difference when you work with a CPA who not only just CPA, but works with travel nursing. That's really, Mm. really important. I wonder though, how does it impact your relationships? Because is this like a single person's game or would someone like a single mom be able to partake in the travel nursing industry? Oh, I love this question. Um, So I travel nurse for about 10 years and six of those years, I was actually in a relationship Um, I will say when it comes to a, like any relationship, it Mm. is long distance. And what really worked for us is, you know, we made a deal. I was like, listen, if I'm traveling, you got to come visit me at least once a month. And he did. So, um, I would make sure in my contracts, I had, you know, our, a four day weekend off and every month we would plan something and it actually worked out really great for him too. Cause it was a mini vacation. He was like, mm. yeah, I get to go see my girl wherever she at. And I'm always somewhere warm and tropical. So <laughs> mm. that really worked out. Um, so yes, you can absolutely travel if you're in a relationship and there is married couples who travel together. Um, and you can do either, or I know some people who travel with their partner and their partner either has a flexible job where they can work online or remotely. So it mm-hmm. works out. Or they look at the finances. Like there's many nurses in my program. They're like, you know what? I didn't think travel nursing was possible. But when I looked at the finances, we're actually still going to make more money if my husband quits his job and travels with me. And so, yeah, like the husband will quit the job. 
they travel with, you know, their wife and they take care of the kids. So they have child care and they're still coming out making more money. So it really just depends on like your finances, crunching the numbers. It's totally possible. I know single moms who travel, I would say the biggest obstacle for single moms is just finding child care. And the nurses that I know that travel that are single moms, they either, they will typically bring their a child care person with them. So whether it's a partner or mm-hmm. whether it's their aunt, cousin, mm-hmm. mama, because like mm-hmm. I said, your income increases so much as a travel nurse that you can afford to be like, okay, I'm going to get a two bedroom apartment and I will, you know, pay this person to help take care of my children. Um, and then also I know many nurses who you know, they have a family at home and they pick up shorter contracts. So there's one nurse I know that has like a farm in Kentucky, but the pay in Kentucky for nurses is so, 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 so low. Like it's a difference between like $20 an hour versus like $200 an hour. So she literally will just catch a flight and, you know, pick up a contract for three months and she'll work a ton of, you know, overtime because she wants to just make as much money as she can in the shortest amount of time possible. And then she flies back to Kentucky, takes care of the farm, takes care of the kids, and she's able to take six months off of year because the cost of living is so low in Kentucky. Like she does. So some people look at it as, oh my gosh, I'm spending time away from my kids. But in her situation, she bought more time with her kids because She's off every summer. They're vacationing together. Um, so it's like a small sacrifice for a short amount of time. And she's able to save that money and do it for kids. So there's and ways that's a beautiful. It. There, that's a beautiful thing. So tell me about what you've been able to do to create more wealth for yourself now that you've bought back that time as you're, you know, retired from travel nursing. Yeah, Um, I would say for me in particular, I kind of fell into entrepreneurship when I started creating my program and doing like online education. And so I was able to really leverage my time off. So one thing about travel nursing is if you do it right, it should put you in the position to where you are literally working less and earning more. Mm -hmm. And what many travel nurses do they're going to live their best life. They're going to be on vacation. They're going to be buying all the Louis Vuitton bags. <laughs> <laughs> living the good life. <laughs> yeah, living the good life. And I get it. I get it. My first year as a travel nurse, I bought my dream car. I was living my best life. But then what really changed everything for me and shifted my perspective was um, in between one of my contracts, I lived in Costa Rica for like three months. And mm-hmm. it was only about $800 a month to live there. And I was eating good. I was living good. I went to Spanish school. I was meeting new people. I even finished my master's degree and paid for it cash in that three months. And yeah, it was like life changing for me. So when I came back, that dream car that I had, that's how much it was, 800 a month. And I was like, you know what? There is so much more that I can do with this 800 a month. So I got rid of my dream car And it just really shifted my mindset on how I was going to just spend my money moving forward. So instead of just like blowing all my money on things and vacations, I still vacationed on my time off and I would take about three months off. But the difference was I really started investing my time and money wisely. So Mm -hmm. I started investing in courses and programs that could teach me skill sets that I could learn um, for my business and to help earn extra income away from the bedside. Like for a small example, I invested in a course to learn ads, to learn copywriting that helped my business, obviously. But now several years later, I also get, you know, healthcare companies pay me to run ads for them. And that's now a job that I can earn thousands of dollars more a month remotely. So I don't Mm -hmm. have to go to the bedside. I can just run ads for a healthcare agency or, you know, whatever. Um, so yeah, basically the key to building wealth as a travel nurse is to leverage your skill set, to put yourself in a position to work less and earn more. And during that time off, 
use that time and that extra money to invest in skill sets that you can build away from the bedside so you're not completely dependent. And not everyone has to, you know, retire. I just want every nurse, so many nurses are so burnt out. Mm. And I just want every nurse to have the freedom to just say, you know what? No, like I deserve a week off, a month off. Right. Three months off without going broke and being financially stressed. It just makes such a huge difference when it comes to work-life balance. It sounds life-changing. So for anyone who's interested in maybe learning how to do exactly what you've done, where can we find you and where can we follow your journey? Yes, you can find me on Instagram at Sarah underscore games. And you can also learn more about my program at sixfiguretravelnurse.com. 